Okay, welcome to uh, Art Lecture 3. We'll also be talking about uh, the uh, electrical activity of art and the ash potentials and the conduct conductors and contractile. Um, wait a minute, put that up here. Hang on a second. The uh, potentials in the contractile and conductive uh, cardio sites. Okay. First, the memory potential of the nodal cells about the SA node minus 60 nodes. Uh, we'll talk about the nodal cells, pumps, and channels. Uh, this act potential, as I said, is going to be a little different than the act potentials you're used to uh, in uh, when we went over them uh, last semester in the uh, nervous system. Uh, we have sodium potassium leak channels, of course. Those are the same. We have sodium potassium pumps and calcium pumps. Those are the same. But the voltage gain channels, a little different here. We have what's called slow sodium, fast calcium, and potassium channels, which are really fast potassium channels. But there's only one type of potassium. And here is. Um, uh, the example of ash potentials at the, uh, in the nodal cells. So these are uh, conductive cardiocytes. And as you see, number one reaching threshold, slow voltage uh, gated uh, sodium channels. The three types of channels are over to the left. Uh, these are leaky, they leak. And they are down resting area potential at minus 60. The sodium just leaks in and the polarizes to minus 40. Threshold. At threshold, what happens? Fast uh, voltage gated calcium. This is different than uh, the rising, this is the rising phase of the act potential, but in um, nerves, it's uh, sodium channels, so a voltage gated sodium channel. In a nodal cell, it's voltage-gated calcium channels, fast calcium. Then when they get up to the positive uh, ranges above zero, they turn off and uh, and fast uh, the, the, well, the fast voltage-gated channels close, uh, then the voltage-gated uh, potassium channels open. Remember, they're always in a slight delay. So uh, at the uh, in the positive range, it's above zero. Um, memory potential, fast calcium slows, potassium opens, uh, potassium rushes out of the cell and causes the weak polarization. And that is exactly like a uh, uh, nervous system, um, nerve cells. Okay. So the pacemaker, remember, is the SA node. Uh, remember, it's autorhythmic to the pacemaker potential. That, that potential that, uh, that slowly depolarizes um, is uh, due to these leaky, slow uh, sodium channels. Um, there, is, there is leaky, slow sodium gates lead uh, the, the nodal cells to slowly depolarize the threshold. And as you were so saying, same thing we said in the last slide. At threshold, fast voltage gated calcium. Remember, calcium is always more concentrated in the outside cell than inside. Calcium rushes in, it's a positively charged ion, it causes a, a depolarization. Then at, uh, at the top of the potential, the sodium channels now open, uh, sodium uh, rushes out of the cell, and the cells come back down the rest of the potential. They move forward. But then the leaky sodium channels take over again and start to slowly uh, uh, cause the cells to, to depolarize. No more rate fires about every eight seconds. So it depends, you know. Really, your heart rate depends on how leaky these slow sodium channels are. 
if they're really leaky, you're going to have a pretty fast heart rate because you're going to uh, you get to underestimate the potential and all of a sudden you go right back up the threshold. If they're not so leaky, then you get a slower heart rate. It takes longer for the cells to fall right the threshold. And that actually has to do with the uh, innovation by the uh, autonomic nervous system. Uh, seems to control how leaky these uh, um, sodium uh, channels are. If uh, um, the, as I said, the, the normal, if you take 48 seconds and you put it over the course of a minute, that's about 72 beats per minute, right? Uh, and that's slowed by parasympathetic input, which is also known as vagal tone. Uh, this slows your heart rate. Remember, the natural rhythm of your heart, if you cut the nerve strip to your heart, would be about 100. Uh, it's slowed by the parasympathetic nervous system, it's about 72. Okay, so um, this active potential that leaves the SA node excites the atrial cardiocytes. And these are contractile uh, cardiocytes. And they have a different type of action potential, but we're going to get to that in a, in a little bit. The impulse conducted by a gap junctions in the atrium to the AV node in about 50 uh, milliseconds, which is about a 20th of a second. All right. Signal, remember, signal delay at the AV node for about 100 milliseconds, about 10 milliseconds. Then signal transmitted through the fiber skeleton uh, by the AV bundle, also known as the bundle of kids. I wonder if the bundle of kids. Uh, down through into the intraventricular sector. This, and then that, uh, the bundle of kids breaks up the two bundle branches called the right and left bundle branch. They eventually get put out for the apex of heart and they spread out in the uh, apex of heart at the Purkinje fibers. Uh, the Purkinje fibers that now uh, spread the electric activity to the, to the contractile cells um, of, the, uh, of the ventricles, and they'll cause them to, to contract. And now it's back to gap junction. Now the electrical activity is there spread from one cell to the other in, by a gap junction. The signal reaches the papillary muscles first. These are the muscles that hold on to the chordae tendine, and that causes, they pick up slack in the chordae tendine because the pressure in the ventral is about to increase, and this is going to slam shut the AV node. When we get to that, we'll be talking more about the opening and cool and closing of valves when we start talking about Cycle. That'll probably be in the next thing. And there it is right there. Um, a one, two, three, and four. Uh, Act potential generated SA node travels number two, uh, travels through the to the atrium by the gap junctions, delayed by a tenth of a second at the AV node. The node fire sends out the the accidental to the but of his bundle branches, kidney fibers, and the, and the heart stuff, and then the, to the uh, regular contractile uh, cardiocytes in the, in the ventricles, it goes back to the gap jump, and this contraction starts up from the apex of the heart toward the base. All right. So, this is, so we'll get into cardiac rhythm uh, right now. Uh, contraction called systole, systole or systole. So um, when the heart is relaxed, it's in diastole or diastole. Normal rhythm of the heart is called the sinus rhythm. And uh, that is usually I just said around 72 beats per minute is the, is the average. Now, you can have uh, uh, rhythmic disorders, arrhythmias, as well, uh, abnormal rhythm, and it's also known as an ectopic focus, 
where uh, some other uh, parts of the heart uh, start to, to, to uh, some other cells that are not in the, in the pacemaker, they start to fire off. And they fire off in an erratic rhythm. And this, and this is called fibrillation. And you have atrial fibrillation, which is serious but not life threatening. And then you have uh, it's called AFib or the ventricular fibrillation, fibrillation, which is life threatening because you, you, uh, if you, uh, you can actually live without your atrial pumping, uh, but you can't live without your ventricles pumping. So uh, one of the problems is nodal rhythm. The SA no, uh, node is damaged. And so in this, in this case, the atrium is really not going to work. The AV node takes over. And it sets the pace. But it has a slower natural rhythm than the SA node. Remember, the SA node is the overall heart pacemaker because it has the fastest natural rhythm. Um, the, uh, the, when the AV node takes over, it may drop down to 50, 40 or 50 beats per, per minute. Um, that's this natural rhythm. So your heart rate will drop considerably. And this is st still enough to sustain life. We're not going to be putting any marathons or anything, but you'll still be alive. Um, but if you don't have an ACA node, say the AB node is also damaged, it doesn't uh, work. That's called heart block. And that means your heart rate is going to drop to around 20 beats per minute, which is the natural rhythm of the bundle branches, I think. And that's not enough to sustain life. So that would be mean death if something is done. Uh, and this is, of course, when people have problems like this, this is when they, they put in heart pacemakers. So, <clears throat> So this is what I do these. Um, um, you can have a premature particular contraction. Sometimes you have uh, uh, contractions that are out of sequence, and that's not too bad. And then, as I mentioned, fibrillation is your all the heart muscle cells are beating at their own uh, uh, at their own rate, and there's no coordinated uh, response. And if your heart to work, and you you're in a lie. The heart has to be coordinated. The wave, the wave of electroactivity has to come up over the atria in a nice wave and cause a smooth contraction. Then the, the uh, extension has to be transmitted to the ventricles and you start a nice wave of electrical excitation over it. And they're all uh, uh, firing at, in a nice wave and the, and the contractions in that way. If they're firing all over the place, then the heart can't pump, uh, like I said. And if you if you uh, atria, uh, uh, if you're an atrium, uh, your your uh, uh, if you're not working and you lose a lot of what's called cardiac output, uh, and uh, like I said, you're going to be uh, uh, not working on as much blood as, as you normally would. Um, but it's not life threatening. Although what happens is. The blood starts to slow down. If the atrium don't work, the blood slows down. What happens when the blood slows down? You start to get uh, danger about thrombosis. And so that's why people who have atrium, well, like myself, take a anticoagulant to make sure that if you do go and have an atrium uh, session, that uh, you inhibit your, your blood from clotting. So this will form uh, thrombosis. It's going to turn into embolisms in your atria. Uh, in um, is that particular fibrillation, death ensues. That's where those shock, those uh, defibrillators, where they shock the heart. That's uh, that's what that is meant to do is you, sh you shock the heart and you send every cell. See, if the, if your heart's in fibrillation, um, this uh, cell over here could be at uh, minus sixty. This cell over here is at minus 40. This cell over here is at zero. They're all different, uh, different um, memory potentials. So we deal with these with those paddles, 
is you've shot every cell back down to minus 60. And now they're all at the same level. Now the ASA milk can take over maybe and put and get them all on the same game plan. Okay. So uh, the cards are actual potential. You need to know uh, what these look like and what uh, um, and what uh, ion genomes are being used to contract the myocytes versus the uh, conductor myocytes. Conduct contract out at breast and other potentials of minus 90. They are not autoreactive. And the stimulus opens voltage-gated sodium channels. And then, uh, and then when sodium gates close, slope uh, at, at, a, at a, a minus about plus 30, slow calcium opens. So here's something different. Now we had fast calcium in the conduct. Uh, conductive cartridge. Now he has slow calcium uh, and, and uh, opens up uh, after the sodium gate closed. So the rising phase is due to fast sodium and what's called the plateau phase is due to what's called slow calcium. Then the slow calcium gate closed, potassium gates open, and then uh, the heart muscle cells repolarize. And the, the the uh, consequence of uh, this is that uh, a con uh, uh, conductive uh, exponential lasts a, 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 few, uh, a few milliseconds, well, in tens of milliseconds. A, a, uh, the exponential in a contractor cardiac lasts a quarter of a second. So, Slow calcium insult produces a plateau. It delays the repolarization. It keeps it negative. So plateau allows for sustained contraction in a long absolute fracture period. That is 250 milliseconds. That prevents summation. You can't let your heart summate. Uh, we talked about summation. If you go, if you, in fact, the last semester we talked about muscle. A muscle, uh, I mean, um, skeletal muscle, how it can summate. If you stimulate very rapidly, you can have a much larger contraction. All the contractions, they summate on top of each other. You don't want that to happen in heart muscle. Heart muscle cannot summate because it's got a huge, long, absolute refractive period. So if you stimulate it again, it's not going to uh, contract. And then the, uh, we're going to go over the electric card again. We're going to briefly mention the ECG, go over the parts, what they mean, but not much because we're going to have a whole lab on the ECG. And there is the, um, the uh, uh, depiction of the uh, accidental in the contract of uh, um, cardiac sites. Number one, depolarization. A fast voltage gave you sodium channels over the rising phase up to about plus 30. Then remember those fast sodium are inactive at that point. And then in two, uh, part two, voltage gated uh, potassium channels open and some potassium uh, flows out, but slow gated calcium channels open up. And this is a, allows a inflow of calcium into the into the cell and keeps it to polarize. So even though it's potassium uh, uh, thrown out, uh, it, it's counterbalanced by the potassium coming in. And even though it goes down a little bit and, and gets repolarized a little bit, it stays up pretty high. Then when the salt, salt calcium turns off, fast potassium opens up and you get a rapid repolarization down to the uh, breast and other potential of minus nine. That's part three. Okay. So this is like really different. Right. Here's the ECG. You got the P, uh, P wave, which is atrial uh, 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 depolarization. You got the QRS segment, which is uh, uh, the ventricular depolarization. And you got the T, which is uh, ventricular 
uh, reprogrammation. And uh, the PQ segment is when the uh, the uh, actinosol is traveling through the atrium by the diaphragm. The ST segment is when the uh, is when the uh, the uh, actinosol is not traveling through the ventricle to the diaphragm. Like I said, just going to briefly mention it. We're going to have a whole lab on this, and we'll do that in the back. So here's the consequence of that really uh, uh, of the plateau phase. Uh, if you look to the left here, here's skeletal muscle. Look how, uh, how, uh, how long it takes for the skeletal muscle activate. Uh, you know, a, a few milliseconds. It's really, really quick. It's depolarizing and neatly depolarized. And then if you, and you have that muscle contract. If you, and again, so if you stimulate it really soon after, Reposition, you can get a summation, you get a, a larger, uh, um, a higher strength of contraction. But look to the right here, the cardiac muscle. Remember, sodium channels are not um, reopened until you get back to the rest of the anchorage attention. You get the back to the rest of the anchorage attention really quickly in filaments. But here, because of those slow calcium, that all green air is absolute for fracture theory. No way you're going to get another contr a contraction of the heart muscle, even if you stimulate it uh, right after uh, the stimulation that causes deportation, doesn't it? So this, this stops uh, your heart from swimming. And then, uh, and then after about 250 milliseconds, now you can, you can stimulate the heart again, and uh, it'll, it'll contract it. Uh, absolute effective period is when the sodium channels are inactivated and you cannot open them up again until you get down to the rest of the tension. Okay, cardiac cycle, one contraction, relaxation of the heart. Uh, so one contraction, relaxation of the heart is called the cardiac cycle. So one um, systole, one diastole. Uh, remember, unidirectional movement of blood. Blood moves in one direction uh, through the heart. And that is due to the opening of, and opening and closing of valves to prevent back flow, the one-way valves. And what opens up uh, a valve uh, and closes a valve are pressure changes in the uh, chambers of the heart. If you have a valve here, and the pressure on this side is greater than the pressure on this side, that valve will open. You got a valve here, and the pressure over here is greater than the pressure over here, that valve will be closed. So, as I just said, valves open and close to the pressure differences across them. What side of the valve is the pressure greatest? To determine whether that valve is open or closed. Uh, so the blood flow and the uh, cardiac cycle, pressure gradient. Pressure gradient is a change in pressure across the valve. So as I mentioned, valves open and close to the pressure. Size of chamber determines the pressure. Um, and this is going to be true for your lungs also. We felt something called Moore's law. The, the, the larger the chamber, the smaller the pressure. Smaller the chamber. The greater pressure, right? And so a relaxed chamber is large, pressure is lower. The contracted chamber, size is small, pressure up. Okay. Uh, okay, I'm gonna start on uh, uh, the, the phases of the cardiac cycle. I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, end this uh, video and get on and start with the phases of the cardiac cycle. Because I don't want to go too long on the, on the videos here because they, uh, they make the trouble uh, uploading into YouTube if I make it too long. So we're going to stop that. We're going to stop a heart three right here. See you later um, for heart four. Stay tuned, uh, stay tuned for heart four.